In the realm of television history, few series have left as indelible a mark as Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Its iconic host, Fred Rogers, welcomed viewers into a world of kindness, curiosity, and imagination for over three decades. As we reflect on this enduring show, one might wonder, are there lesser known facts or anecdotes that fascinate you? Or perhaps, do you hold a cherished memory associated with this classic program? Now, let's delve into some random and intriguing tidbits about the show. Did you know that Fred Rogers composed nearly all the music for the series himself? This multi-talented host wasn't just a comforting presence. He was the creative force behind much of the show's musical charm. Another interesting fact lies in the simplicity of the set. The deliberate low-budget aesthetics aimed to make children feel at home, and it worked brilliantly. Considering these insights, do you find yourself surprised or intrigued by these behind-the-scenes glimpses into the making of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood? Perhaps it triggers a cherished memory or personal experience related to the show. We would love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. In a world that often rushes by, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood stands as a timeless beacon of warmth and understanding. Join the conversation and share your thoughts. Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, a beloved television series that premiered in the late 1960s, was the brainchild of Fred Rogers, a gentle and empathetic host who sought to create a nurturing space for children. Originating as a local program in Pittsburgh before expanding nationally, the show featured iconic characters like the soft-spoken Daniel Striped Tiger and the friendly puppet X the Owl. The heart of the series lay in its unique format, blending Rogers' genuine conversations with the audience, imaginative puppetry, and visits to the neighborhood of make-believe. Rogers' deliberate pace and thoughtful approach distinguished the show as he addressed essential themes such as kindness, self-worth, and understanding emotions. The deliberate simplicity of the set, coupled with Rogers' iconic cardigan and sneakers, became synonymous with the program's warm and comforting atmosphere. Over its enduring run, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood left an indelible mark on popular culture, influencing generations with its emphasis on empathy and inclusivity. The show's impact extended beyond the screen, as Fred Rogers' advocacy for early childhood education and his unwavering commitment to fostering a sense of community resonated with viewers. Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood remains a timeless example of the transformative power of children's programming offering enduring lessons that continue to echo in the hearts of those who experience the neighborhood's tender embrace. In episode 1015 of the 1968 TV series Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, which aired on February 28, 1969, viewers witnessed a unique union the marriage of King Friday the 13th and Queen Sarasara, officiated by Mr. Anybody. Beyond the puppetry and imaginative settings, the show's creator, Fred Rogers, maintained a meticulous approach. Despite his gentle on-screen demeanor, Rogers, a perfectionist, did not tolerate shoddy ad-libbing. He believed in providing children with programming of the same quality as that produced for adults. This commitment to excellence even influenced casting decisions, as seen when Georgia Romero sought to cast Betty Aberlin in his classic film Night of the Living Dead, only to be refused by Fred Rogers. This insight into Rogers' dedication sheds light on the meticulous thought behind the scenes of a program that left a lasting impact on generations, emphasizing the importance of quality content for young minds. Fred Rogers' commitment to creating a quality children's program extended beyond the screen. In an era marked by societal attitudes, one notable aspect involved Francois Clemens, a member of the cast who had to conceal his homosexuality due to the prevailing norms. Despite the threat of being ousted if his orientation surfaced, Clemens later shared that Fred Rogers evolved to embrace and tolerate his true self. Family bonds were also woven into the fabric of the show. Fred Rogers' sons and grandson made appearances, with Jim Rogers joining in episode 1202 in 1972, and both Jim and his son Alex featuring in Fathers and Music, episode 1623, aired on August 1, 1990. This personal touch added a unique dimension to the program, illustrating Rogers' dedication to creating a meaningful and inclusive experience for young viewers. Interestingly, when Fred Rogers chose to conclude new episodes in 2001, there was no explicit mention or hint within the show itself. The decision was rooted in the belief that most viewers would naturally outgrow the program before realizing that only reruns were being aired. 
This strategic choice, aligned with Roger's thoughtful approach, reflected a desire to maintain the enduring impact of the neighborhood. Fred Rogers' meticulous dedication to quality, acceptance of diversity, and the infusion of personal connections into the show exemplify the depth and thoughtfulness that characterized the 1968 TV series. The legacy of Mr. Rogers' neighborhood continues to resonate, leaving an indelible mark on the hearts of those who experienced its timeless lessons. In episode 1326, the show's seventh season premiere in 1969, Mr. Rogers traded his iconic cardigan for overalls and painted the walls of his television house blue. This change, lasting until the series' end in 2001, marked a vibrant shift from the original bright yellow walls. The deliberate choice to transform the set's color reflects Fred Rogers' meticulous approach to creating an engaging and visually appealing environment for young viewers. Beyond the colorful transformation, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood experienced various parodies and satires throughout its history. Notably, Eddie Murphy's Mr. Robinson's Neighborhood on Saturday Night Live earned Rogers' approval. His measured response to parodies demonstrated his appreciation for those that understood and respected the essence of the show, adding a layer of pop culture recognition to the series. Additionally, the inclusion of Francois Clemens in the cast exemplifies the show's commitment to diversity. Hired after Rogers heard him perform in a church gospel performance, Clemens became one of the first black individuals to regularly appear on a children's TV series. Overcoming initial reluctance, Clemens' portrayal of a police officer became a powerful platform to teach young viewers about trust and respect for law enforcement. These nuanced aspects, from the change in set design to the show's cultural impact, and commitment to diversity showcase the depth and thoughtfulness embedded in Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. The series, with its enduring legacy, goes beyond the screen, leaving a lasting impression on generations. Fred Rogers, the creator and host of the iconic TV series, meticulously crafted every detail, ensuring a quality viewing experience for young minds. Behind the scenes, interesting tidbits add depth to the show's legacy. For instance, the character Lady Elaine Fairchild's title, according to Rogers, wasn't a familial connection to King Friday the 13th. Rather, it simply designated her as a lady. Another noteworthy aspect involves Mr. McFeely's speedy delivery songs. Two distinct versions existed, with the second, introduced in 1991, becoming more familiar to viewers. The evolution of these songs reflects the meticulous attention to detail that characterized the show. Moreover, all original songs were composed by Fred Rogers, a trained composer. Collaborating with Josie Carey on some songs, including Then Your Heart Is Full of Love and In Glad In The Way I Am, highlighted the creative collaboration that contributed to the series' musical richness. These lesser-known facts contribute to the multifaceted nature of the 1968 TV series Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, showcasing Fred Rogers' commitment to excellence and the intricate details that made the show a cherished part of many childhoods. As we bid adieu to the realm of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, let the echoes of that familiar trolley bell linger in the corridors of your memories. Whether you were a wide-eyed child learning the ABCs or a contemplative soul seeking solace in the gentle wisdom of Fred Rogers, this timeless series has woven itself into the tapestry of our lives. As we stroll down the neighborhood of nostalgia, take a moment to reflect on the tender lessons, the puppetry magic, and the soothing cadence of Mr. Rogers' voice that stirred something deep within. It's more than just a TV show, it's a shared journey through the neighborhoods of kindness, empathy, and the sheer joy of make-believe. Now, let's turn the spotlight to you, dear friend. What moments resonate in your heart? Was it the affirming messages, the cozy cardigans, or the enchanting land of make-believe that sparked a flicker of warmth in your soul? Share your cherished memories and reflections, for in doing so, you become a storyteller in this grand, communal narrative. In a world that often races forward, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood stands as a timeless haven, a place where sincerity met simplicity. Your thoughts, your experiences, the add depth to this collective tale. So, as we part ways, take a moment to pen down your musings and share them with kindred spirits who, like you, found a friend in the quietude of the neighborhood. Thank you for ambling down memory lane with us. Your stories enrich the legacy of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood making it a perpetual home for the heart. Until we meet again, be kind, be curious, and keep the spirit of the neighborhood alive in your own unique way.